Hey, chicks. Now that was politically incorrect. Let me fix it. Hello, ladies. Ah, now it's politically correct. If you haven't guessed, this video is all about the politically correct way of doing things. You know, we live in a world in which sometimes it's not what you say or what you do, but how you say it or how or why you do something that matters. In other words, there's a politically correct way and a politically incorrect way of saying just about everything. Well, the same is true in the world of menopause. And today we'll discuss the politically correct way to get what you want for managing your menopause. In the last video, I taught you the difference between the primary use of a medication and the secondary use of a medication. And you learned that the primary use of hormone replacement therapy is for your symptoms of menopause. And the secondary use of hormone replacement therapy is for preventing diseases associated with menopause. So in this video, I'm going to connect the dots between the primary and secondary uses of HRT with what's politically correct and what's not politically correct. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Well, crazy or not, the fact is that you need to know this in order to get what you want for managing your menopause. So you need this video. Let's start with a bit of a review. Two videos ago in video 98, I explained that the WHI studied HRT for its secondary purpose to prevent diseases like heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's disease. It did not study HRT for preventing symptoms of menopause, which is its primary purpose. And because the media reports about the WHI didn't make that distinction, women became afraid to use HRT for any reason. But if you've been watching my videos, you now know about this thing called the estrogen window. And just in case you're new to my channel, videos 80 through 90 are on the estrogen window and you definitely need to watch those in order. So you also know that the estrogen window is all about using HRT to prevent heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's disease. So you might be thinking that you want to make, want to take HRT specifically for the purpose of preventing these diseases. And you may be planning to march right into your doctor's office and say, how dare you? Why haven't you given me HRT to prevent the diseases associated with the estrogen window? And this video is all about why that's just not the best way to go about it. So calm down and listen to what I have to say. If you're wondering why you need to watch this video in order to know how to ask for HRT, then you definitely need to watch this video. <laughs> I promise you that I'm going to save you a lot of confusion and spare you a big battle with your doctor. You know how the reason someone does something can make all the difference in the world as to whether or not what they did is right or wrong? To use a familiar example, let's say G.I. Jane here shoots the Incredible Hulk. That's wrong. But what if G.I. Jane shoots the Incredible Hulk in self-defense? What if the Incredible Hulk was attacking G.I. Jane? Ah, now do you think she did the right thing? So, we have all sorts of examples in our society about what's politically correct or politically incorrect. It's politically incorrect for this guy to dislike this guy just because of his color. But it's more politically correct for this guy to dislike this guy for having an affair with his wife or something, right? Oh, you get the idea. Okay, so 
This whole saga of the WHI has shaped what's politically correct in terms of the use of HRT. So you know now that before the WHI, women took HRT for their symptoms of menopause. And the secondary benefit was prevention of heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's. And then the WHI reported that the risks of HRT were greater than the benefits. And women stopped using HRT for anything. And now, after all these years, we're right back where we started, knowing that HRT is best used for your symptoms of menopause, but that it has the secondary benefit of preventing these diseases. Well, history has a way of shaping what's politically correct. So this history of what happened with the WHI will shape how you have to approach this with your doctor. Do you remember in tutorial 91, I taught you about guidelines? They're the rules for practicing medicine. There are multiple organizations that put out the guidelines for HRT usage. And ever since the WHI scared everybody about HRT, these organizations have been very political in their wording about when to use HRT. And because everything has to be politically correct, the wording in these guidelines is very careful. In essence, all the guidelines state that women should take HRT only for the primary purpose of alleviating their symptoms of menopause. They should not take HRT specifically for the secondary purpose of preventing heart attack, osteoporosis, or Alzheimer's disease. But after that, they state that women who take HRT may get protection from these diseases as a secondary benefit. In other words, ladies, HRT, specifically estrogen, does prevent these diseases. But the guidelines are not willing to admit that outright. Instead, they all take the politically correct route of saying you should really be taking HRT for your symptoms of menopause. What this means is that you have to communicate with your doctor in a way that is politically correct in order to get HRT. So let's play out some scenarios. If you say, doctor, I want HRT specifically to prevent a heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's disease. Your doctor is probably going to respond with, the benefits do not weigh away the risks. If you say, doctor, I want HRT for purposes of the estrogen window, your doctor is probably going to say, the benefits do not outweigh the risks. But if you say, doctor, I want HRT for my symptoms of menopause, the night sweats, the hot flashes, oh my god, I can't sleep. Your doctor is probably going to say, fine, that's their primary purpose. You see, the reason I gave you this video is to save you the confusion. I've taught you about the benefits of HRT for the estrogen window and preventing these diseases. But if you use that as your primary reason for wanting HRT, your doctor will say, the benefits do not outweigh the risks. My aim with these videos is to arm you with the tools to get what you want to manage your menopause your way. And I know that some of what you encounter in your doctor's office is confusing. And I don't want this difference between the primary and secondary uses of HRT or what's politically correct to get in your way of getting what you want. So if you want HRT, Ask for it to alleviate your symptoms of menopause. It's really that simple. Okay, 
I'll leave you with that. Come back in a week. Follow me. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe. <laughs> Until then, take care. <laughs> Bye.